Hello, and welcome to this eGrow instructional video. This was in the title, How to Effectively Deal with Western Flower Thrips. My name is Raymond Cloyd. I'm a professor and research extension horticultural entomologist in the Department of Entomology at Kansas State University. First of all, Western Flower Thrips, probably the most destructive insect pests that greenhouse producers deal with. Why? Well, Western Flower Thrips causes both direct and indirect plant damage. The direct the direct plant damage is associated with their feeding behavior. That is, the feeding by the thrips on either leaves or flowers causes direct injury. The, the indirect damage is that western flower thrips vectors a number of viruses including tomato spotted wilt virus and more importantly, impatient necrotic spot virus. Once a plant has been positively identified as having a virus, there is no cure for the plant and it must be disposed of immediately because that plant serves as a reservoir for future infestations by the thrips feeding on plants and mistransmitting the virus. So let's talk about western flower thrips life cycle and biology. The western flower thrips females lay eggs in leaf plant tissues. These eggs hatch into first end star larvae that then develop into second end star larvae. The second end star larvae go down to the base of a plant and get in the growing medium and then you undergo two pupil stages. After the final pupil stage they emerge as adults and the life cycle starts over again. The ambient air temperature determines how fast the life cycle takes. For example, at about 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, the life cycle takes about 18 to 24 days to complete. But once we start getting into the 75 and 80 degree temperatures, the life cycle can be completed in less than two weeks. Okay, the first thing you need to do is you need to scout for western flower thrips populations. And that, and that entails basically two approaches. The first one is using yellow sticky cards attached to bamboo stakes that are placed just above the crop canopy to detect adult stages of western flower thrips. The second method is using what we refer to as the beat method and that includes using a clipboard with an 8.5 by 11 white piece of paper. You then place it right underneath the plant canopy and you vigorously shake the plant. After shaking, you can look at the white piece of paper and you should be able to see both adult and the larval stages of the western flower thrips on the white sheet of paper and it can tell you a presence or absence. An important aspect of western flower thrips behavior is their tendency to inhibit thigmotactic behavior. What that means is that western flower thrips tend to reside in terminal growth and subsequently that makes it difficult to control them with either insecticides or biological control agents. So in order to effectively deal with western flower thrips and greenhouse production systems, it takes a holistic or integrated strategy. This includes scouting, also sanitation, that is removing weeds. Many weeds within the greenhouse harbor provide refuge for western flower thrips. Also the use of insecticides, being sure to know to always rotate modes of action. And then lastly is the use of biological control agents or natural enemies. And there are a number that are commercially available, including a number of predatory mites and a predatory bug. For example, the predatory mites include Neoceos cucumeris, and another one is Amblyseus swirsky. These predatory mites primarily feed on the first or second larval stages of the western flower thrips, so they need to be released immediately or early in the crop production cycle. The, la the other one is called a predatory mite, or aureus. Aureus is a predatory bug that attacks both the larva and the adult stages of western flower thrips. Again, when you're using biologic control, you have to make these releases early on in the crop production cycle. So if you'd like some more information about how to effectively deal with western flower thrips, there's an extension publication available through Kansas State University entitled Western Flower Thrips, Management in Greenhouse Grown Crops. Well, that concludes this video. If you want more information, you can contact me. My email and phone number are going to be available at the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.